of you guys and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are already subscribed for those of you who are new welcome my name is Kiara Selena I'm a practical nurse and on my channel I mainly talk about nursing and health but we also do a bit of beauty makeup and vlog so if you're into those things please make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you will be notified whenever I post future content so in this video, I wanted to address the very famous coronavirus. Now I know that most of you guys have heard of the coronavirus, some of you guys maybe not, maybe you guys are just finding out about it today, which is fine, better late than ever, but I really, really wanted to address the coronavirus because I feel like it is something that a lot of us have underestimated when you know coronavirus stories first started coming out, and I'm starting to realize more and more every day how serious it is, and I feel like as a medical professional, it is my responsibility to kind of educate the community on you know what it is and ways to prevent it from spreading since we are really the ones who are spreading this to each other i mean it started off with a couple thousand people in china and now those numbers have translated to over a hundred thousand people worldwide it's in the usa it's in canada it's in china south korea it's reached africa even new zealand so it is really spreading like wildfire and since i and my co-workers my fellow nurses Thing, my fellow nurses, nursing assistants, physicians, you know, um, lab techs, we are the ones at the front line. I feel like in order to not only protect my community, but to protect myself and my fellow coworkers, it is very, very important that everyone be educated on the coronavirus and how to stop or minimize the spreading of the coronavirus. So let's get into so video. what is the coronavirus so the coronavirus is a family of viruses that can affect your respiratory system and can give you cold or flu like symptoms there are other symptoms that I'm going to mention a little bit later but those are like the main symptoms that you would get some type of respiratory issue or cold or flu like symptoms now the coronavirus itself is not new I think we had the SARS coronavirus in 2002 or 2003 we had the MELS coronavirus and now we just have a new strain of coronavirus called the novel coronavirus now the SARS coronavirus or before I even start about that the coronavirus itself is supposed to be a zoonotic virus meaning that it is a virus that you see in animals however it has been transmitted to humans now a lot of the SARS coronavirus cases were linked to bats and a lot of the novel coronavirus um, cases that we're now seeing in 2020 and the ones that we also saw towards the end of 2019 were linked to a seafood market in Wuhan, China. So a lot of the coronavirus cases in China were linked to that seafood market that was also illegally, well, supposedly illegally selling things like rats, bats, snakes and things like that so they are suspecting that you know people were buying this illegal meat from this seafood market and a lot of the coronavirus cases have been um that are in china have been linked to that seafood market so for those of you who are curious to know where the name coronavirus comes from it's actually latin corona means crown and if you look at a coronavirus you'll see like these little like projections like kind of sticking out of the virus that kind of mimic that of a crown, the little things that stick up off of a crown. A crown. So that is where the name coronavirus comes from. So since I'm Canadian and most of my viewers are from the USA, I'm just gonna give you guys the numbers for North America or for Canada and the USA. I know that these numbers are low compared to other countries, but we need to understand that this virus came all the way from China, right? It started, it originated in China, and now it traveled out here to North America as well as other countries right so we have um, in Canada we have 36 reported cases in Ontario 39 in BC 4 in Quebec 14 in Alberta for a total of 93 cases in Canada those were numbers that I found a couple days ago so it's probably more than that it's probably at about a hundred here in Canada and in the US there was 474 cases across 31 different states so it is real guys like it's actually here we had no cases and now we have like 600 cases in North America and it's like I said those numbers have probably changed it's probably a little bit more now. okay so now I want to talk about 
about infection control and prevention of the spread of this virus, okay? Because sometimes I go on the train, sometimes I take the bus when I'm not driving. When I just, when I sit back and I actually look at people, you see people with masks on that think that they are preventing the spread of this infection or whatever, but they have these masks on and then they're touching poles and then rubbing their eyes or picking their nail, biting their nails and stuff like that. And you can really see when you are a medical professional and you go out on public transportation, you can really see that people are uneducated when it comes to infection control and prevention of the spread of not only the corona the coronavirus, but just anything at all. Okay, guys, so when it comes to infection control and prevention, one thing that I need you guys to understand is nothing, nothing will beat hand washing. I don't care how many masks you put on, nothing will beat hand washing washing hand wash hand wash hand sanitize hand sanitize i can't stress it enough i can't stress it enough you really have to hand wash because one thing that people don't think about is that the coronavirus can actually live on dry inanimate objects for up to three hours and on humid surfaces for up to six days right so you can wear a mask all you want but if you touch you know, you touch the poles on the train or on the bus or whatever, and then you come home, you take off your mask and you don't wash your hands and then you start biting your nails. Well, that mask didn't really help much, did it? Hand wash, okay? You, I don't know, you smoke a joint, you have the munchies on the train, right? And you have a bag of chips. You touch the poles, you touched your card, you touched your keys, you touched money, all these things that other people have also touched. You open a bag of chips, you're eating your bag of chips with your hands, and then you're sucking off the chip powder off your fingers, and you have not washed your hands, or you didn't hand sanitize. So you can wear masks if you want, if you want, you can wear masks. But one thing I also want you guys to understand is that um, the coronavirus is transmitted through droplets, right? So the precaution for coronavirus would be droplet pre precautions, which would be a surgical mask. But one thing I want you guys to understand is droplets can't travel more than five to, uh, I think it's three to six feet. So if you keep your distance from people, then you don't really need a mask. However, it can get a bit, you know, cramp and tight on public transportation so i understand why people wear masks but if you keep your distance from people you're not really talking too closely to people um you know you're not really too close to people when they're coughing and they're sneezing then you should be fine because like i said these droplets cannot travel more than six feet so guys please wash your hands Go to your CVS, go to your Shoppers Drug Mart, go to your Jean Couture, go to your wherever. Get yourself some alcohol-based, alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Because one thing I want you guys to understand is not all hand sanitizers are alcohol-based. And if your hand sanitizer is not alcohol-based, then guess what? You can sanitize your hands, but the coronavirus can still live on your hands because the whatever um, non-alcohol-based hand sanitizer you use was not strong enough to effectively kill or get rid of the virus. So make sure that your hand sanitizer is alcohol-based, okay? Another thing that you guys really need to do is cough and sneeze like this. Do not cough and sneeze onto your hand. I don't understand why people still do this. Like, I feel like everyone should know this by now, but don't cough and sneeze in your hand because you take that same hand and you touch things that other people are going to touch after you. So cough and sneeze in your elbow, cover your nose and cover your mouth tightly, tightly, okay, and cough in like that okay not onto your hand another thing is like i said um avoid kind of like eating in public before washing your hands if you can wait till you get home to properly wash your hands with soap and water because nothing beats soap and water but if you can get home you know wait get home wash your hands clean your countertop and then sit down and eat that would be better than you know e eating on trains and stuff where it's like i said you touch everything with your hands and then you're putting that into your mouth don't bite your nails um don't dig your eyes your nose or your mouth with unwashed or unclean hands and stay 
far from people. Okay? Another thing that people don't think about, and like I said, the coronavirus can live on inanimate dry objects for up to three hours. So what I do as a nurse, I, I'm not really too much at the bedside anymore. I'm more in the office, but once I get into the office, I don't care how close I am with my coworker, I take Lysol disinfectant wipes and I disinfect everything. Everything that I know I'm gonna touch, the desk, my phone, my walkie talkie, my keys, my computer, like everything, disinfect every single thing, right? And that kind of goes with your house as well. If you're going to eat, disinfect your countertop, disinfect your table, disinfect everything. And another thing that we don't think about, our phones. We touch our phones with the dirtiest part of our bodies, which is our hands. We touch everything with our hands and then we touch our phones. So please remember to regularly disinfect your phone. And lastly, if you guys want, you guys can wear the masks. I see a lot of people wearing masks. I see some people wearing the N95 masks, which are the more um, puffy masks that kind of come out. That one with the metal that goes, that you pinch onto your nose. That one is more for airborne um, disorders like TB. I see people wearing the, the N95 mask. I mean, go ahead if you guys want, but the surgical masks are cheaper and surgical masks are for droplet precautions. So if you guys want to get masks, you don't have to pay the extra money to get the N95 mask. You can just get the regular surgical mask if you insist on wearing masks. One thing I will say about masks, okay, and this is what people forget, some people forget Get. some people just simply don't know but masks are good for 90 to 120 minutes okay so if you have one mask and you're reusing that one mask for three weeks straight guess what it's not working it's not protecting you okay 90 to 120 minutes so if you want to wear masks you need to understand that it is going to cost you some money because you will have to change your mask every 120 minutes so every hour and a half or hour and 40 minutes you're going to have to change your mask and put a fresh one on if you want to ensure that you are protected so don't reuse the same mask for like seven days in a row okay just to make that clear. Other little things that you guys can do to prevent getting it is kind of isolating yourself when you don't have to go out. So if you don't have work, if you don't have school, if you don't have anywhere to go, I would say to stay home. For those of you who have babies, I don't have kids, but honestly, if I had kids, they would not be going to daycare. Okay, I know that that's kind of like impossible for those of you who have to work and you know pay the bills and stuff like that. But if ever you guys are off and you can keep your kid with you at home instead, I know that some people like to still send their kids to daycare even though they're off because they kind of want their off day for themselves. But if you guys do have children and you guys can keep them home with you guys instead of sending them to daycare, I would say to keep them home because, like I said, we are the ones who are spreading this. You don't know if you know a father other of a three-year-old girl traveled to Italy he contracted it he's asymptomatic he came gave it to his four-year-old who's asymptomatic who is going to daycare and playing with your kid and they're putting toys in their mouth and things like that your kids put their hands in their mouth they put objects in their mouths all the time and then your kid becomes the unlucky one who contracts it even though the four-year-old is asymptomatic your four-year-old kid gets it and he is symptomatic right so if you can keep your kids home keep them home make sure that you're washing their hands regularly make sure that you're disinfecting the things that they play with especially babies who put everything in their mouth protect your babies okay protect your baby so for the high-risk countries there is Italy China Iran South Korea and Japan so if you can avoid going to places like that that would honestly be best especially because if you are from North America and you go to those places they might give you a hard time when you come back right so just to prevent all of that drama um, you might want to just avoid going to places like that and that is how you really know that um, we are really the people who are like spreading this it is really us it is really poor hand washing and stuff like that because most of the people who are affected by this went to either one of these countries and some people are not even going to those countries they're just traveling to other countries and they're still contracting it because of planes and airports that are not well disinfected and because once again we touch everything with our hands so like i said in the beginning it all comes down to 
hand washing, hand sanitize, hand wash, hand sanitize, hand wash. I just can't say it enough. If I could say it a million times in this video, I would just to like brainwash you. If I could hypnotize you guys into just hand washing and hand sanitizing like every five minutes, I really would. But I can't, all I can do is teach. And lastly, for treatment, there is no vaccination, there is no medication, there is no anything that has been proven to get rid of the coronavirus yet. They are saying that most people recover on their own within a span of 14 days. So after 14 days, if they are um, asymptomatic, then they get released from the hospital, which is still a little bit scary to me because just because something is um, dormant doesn't mean that it is completely gone. So I don't know how that's working out, but that is how they are handling the situation right now. After people are asymptomatic for 14 days, they are being released. So that's that. So if you present any of these symptoms, any fever, any cough, um, shortness of breath, or anything like that, then please make sure that you call your local nurses or Healthline, um, tell them what the situation is, and they will tell you where to go because there are actually hospitals and facilities that are designated to the coronavirus now. Even in my area, they are opening four clinics designated specifically to the coronavirus. So make sure that you call so that you are told exactly where to go don't just go to any hospital that's just going to just make everything worse remember we're talking about preventing the spread of it so make sure that if you are going to go to a facility you call your nurse your local nurses or health line and they you let them designate you to exactly where to go so that you are going to a place that is designated for people with coronavirus and so that you are not spreading it to other people. anyways guys that is it for today's video and the whole coronavirus topic i really hope that this dies out i really hope that they find um, some type of cure or you know solution to the matter once again this is something that you know kind of messes with your immune system I know that this is not proven but I wouldn't think that I don't think that it would hurt for you guys to do things that will boost your immune system so stay up on vitamin C and all of that stuff once again I'm not a scientist and I'm not saying that vitamin C helps but I don't think it would hurt for you guys to do some things that will boost your immune system that's a whole nother video if you guys want to know you know how to boost your immune system then go um, on Google or go on YouTube and you know type in how to boost your immune system there's garlic there's you know lemons oranges all types of stuff um so boost your immune system isolate yourself wash your hands guys stay safe out there protect your babies and i really i really hope that this situation just dies out very soon but this is the end of the video if you guys enjoyed it and found it informative then please like and share 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 this video it is really important that we share the information if people are not aware of how to prevent it then the spread will just continue and the situation will just get worse so make sure that you are sharing this share this with your loved ones share this with your friends share this everywhere and if you guys want to see more content like this and you are not yet subscribed then please make sure you do so and turn on your notification bell so you will be notified whenever i post future content with that being said i hope to see you guys in my next one stay safe and much love bye